All right, so I'll try to keep it quick so we can finish up and go home. Um, my name is Mark Hoffman. I uh, reside at 10 Ogden Avenue here in Swarthmore. Um, I am not an architect. I am a finance person, and I am the proud father of two young kids. And as I'm thinking about the future of, and what we're talking about here, what I ask for you, what I'd really like to echo mostly is the comments tonight about we need a bigger plan that we need to make sure that we don't think about this structure in isolation, but we think about what precedents we set, what future development in town looks like, and what capacity we have, and how that fits into what we want the community to be. And so I wanted to hit on echoing three points I think that were made tonight. One, as the dad, thinking about the traffic issue, I'll ask you to think about is the little kids walking down the sidewalk on Park Avenue because that's the picture that's running through my head as I heard the talk about the entrance to a garage that's in the middle of the retail section. Already, I think the person right before me talked about how nervous parents get when their kids are walking across the driveway that's already there because kids, it's a slow street. It's a slow sidewalk. Kids don't recognize, parents don't recognize that there's a potential car coming because it's the nature of the town. And putting an 80 car garage across the street from what we already know from Keith is a harrowing parking situation. And think about the kids on bikes going by. That's how my, you know, that's how my son's gonna get to Renato's. He goes, he's gonna bike down Park Avenue. We hope not on the sidewalk. Um, he's gonna bike down Park Avenue and is he gonna recognize, is he gonna remember that this slow street actually potentially has cars. And think about the world we live in today with the Amazon delivery trucks that aren't parked in front of a big building. The Grubhub and the DoorDashes and all those things that we live with in modern life. Um, think about how we need to make sure we understand how busy what is now a very quiet street that parents feel safe letting their kids run on the sidewalk. What's that going to be if we go with this? The second thing I'm definitely hearing tonight and I want to echo is, and I think about this particularly as a finance person, I, I was relieved, I will say relieved to hear that the retail spaces would be for lease. But given the size, as Shannon talked about, um, given the size of the footprint of those stores and the expense associated with renting that size, what kinds of businesses will be able to rent space in Swarthmore? We value here, and we valued for decades, homegrown businesses. Whether it's HOM, Gallery and Park, Village Vine, that's what we want in our town. We don't want to see a J. Crew show up. Oh, so, um, not, I, I don't think of J. Crew clothing. It's not that, but it's 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 when we're walking into town, we want it to be. We, I love walking into HOM and seeing somebody who's you know the mother of one of my kids' friends. Um, and I'm sure you probably enjoy seeing my wife walk around with the necklace I bought there, right? Like, that's part of the fun of shopping here. And we want to make sure that we're able to maintain uh, that homegrown nature of the businesses and that we don't end up putting together retail space that only can be big business. And so I think that is something, that feels like something that's pretty easily addressable, but something I think we should be considering carefully. And then the last one, as we think about not just this project, but the grander program, what I'm worried about is do we set precedent here? If we don't have a moderate income set aside for some of this, the, um, for some of this structure, what happens when a developer buys up Dartmouth, the, dark, the apartments on Dartmouth Ave? What happens if somebody buy, or if the new owner of some of the other buildings on Park Avenue decides to upgrade? We want you here. I hope you hear that tonight. And I think it's so everything what everyone's saying about making sure that we think about this as part of a bigger picture, as part of setting the rules for what things are going to get built, and making sure that the homegrown businesses are able to be here, that the town center continues to be a place where parents can bring their children, the little ones, and let them run on the sidewalk. Uh, and making sure that lots of different people can get their start in Swarthmore. I know so many people started with some sort of starter home or an apartment and then moved up and moved up. Um, 
those are the things we need to be thinking about overall as a town. And so please take the time to put together that bigger plan and then evaluate as we make this trade-off, as people have talked about, a five-story building that's bigger than the, that's basically taller than the inn, that probably is gonna be more imposing than the inn. This isn't Chester Road, it isn't the far end of Yale Ave. There's a cost. Now, if we were talking about just moderate income housing, I think we'd have a different conversation. We might say it's worth the cost. That's not to say mixed use is bad, I, I, I'm for it. Um, but we just need to make sure that if we're gonna take on this cost, that we mitigate the risks and then we make sure that we have a broader plan to make sure the town, these, these soft features that draw us here are preserved. Thank you.